Robert Oshkosh, it's day two and another glorious day. We're very fortunate with good weather this year at the biggest show for the summer. I'm Dan Johnson talking with Mark Becker of Rotax Aircraft Engines. So one of the main reasons actually the beginning of the motivation for us to do the 915 is right behind us. Uh, the Trivers who loved the 914s but wanted to have more power. So they were one of the initial trigger to give that extra power. So when we started the development, we pretty at a pretty early stage had some of the customers with the R&D engines in sight. And actually that's also the first feedback we're now getting from the market. It's all the Trivers coming back and said, that's exactly what I was asking for. That's exactly the horsepower I'm getting. And the extra good news for us is this actually it's more than they expected. Because usually if you, you, you hear a number and you have a certain expectation of what that number will do to your aircraft. And the really good thing is with the turbo it does more than they expected. And that's the perfect feedback you can have. That's good. So stuff. on the Trivers side we're very well set. But also on the LSA class, you see quite a few people going after it. With the LSA, of course, with regulations, you know at the beginning we couldn't surf them that well, so it was either experimental or you had to figure your own way to, to fiddle with the gearbox to make it a constant speed. Mm -hmm. So where we said, okay, we, we thought it wouldn't have so much impact on the LSA class because of its weight, but actually it, there is a lot of demand, so we started developing that as well. It's very fair. We had a few that actually were being involving us a pretty, a pretty lot because we wanted some feedback. So, and we did learn from that and we actually did have some of that information was valuable and did actually go into our own certification for that part. Sometimes people in the field can actually help the experts learn things, can't they? Oh, it does happen. It's one of the reasons why you have shows like this. Of course, you get these same questions over and over again, and some of these questions do indicate, please do, and go read the manual. But there's also people who have, uh, answer questions or ask questions I don't have an answer to. And that's usually the ones you should listen to very closely. Well, very diplomatic on both points. <laughs> read the manual, but then if you really got a great question, yeah. we're listening. Yes. Which is, Rotax has always done very well about that. I've heard this since the beginning, Mark. A credit to you and all the team members when they offer constructive yeah. criticism you listen it doesn't mean it happens right away but you're listening correct i mean that's that's the part where you really learn from outside and we saw the customer using it there's no better place to learn right from then the best place right yeah okay so then you had some other news that i want to talk about now i wanted to mention the in-flight adjustable because that's how the engine has been it's required that capability the beginning we thought this engine is so heavy and, and therefore so powerful that it, it won't be in that many LSA classes or worldwide other classes where it does require a fixed pitch per se. But we learned, again, we listened and learned on this part and we decided, okay, we need to offer that one as uh, a fixed pitch sp uh, version as well. So we went ahead put in whatever knowledge we gained about that, did a lot of testing. So you can buy the full engine, optional, as a fixed pitch version as well. Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. I know there is some market for that out there. It may not be the big market for the reasons you explained, but it's definitely some market. Absolutely. People like the newest and latest and greatest. Why not? Correct. Uh, another question relates to in the 912, in the 914, in the 912 IS, all those had a certified version as well as a what I'll call a sport and recreational version. Yeah. Uh, meaning that you could use it in a type certified aircraft. Will this also be the case or is it already the case with the 915 IS? It is already the case for 915 IS and it actually will also be the case for the recertificated with the um, fixed pitch version. Yeah, that was my next question. Yeah. Will it apply to that as well? Yeah. So, People might say, well, why would I want that? Well, one reason we can come up with is these aircraft can be used, at least some of them, with some other qualifiers like pilot skill and the right other equipment involved, but in IFR, IMC situations. And there, Rotax prefers that to be a certified engine. Am I correct? Well, at the end of the day, of course, as you said, it's, it's down to the OEM deciding on what certification the aircraft will have. But you're right, especially if you're going into IFR conditions or even unknown icing or unknown icing, you have to uh, qualify to certain standards and then you might require, very likely require a certified engine. Also, what Rotox learned from the beginning, by actually looking at each engine from a certified standpoint, you kind of do a little bit of a different design you already designed for your certification. So actually, the ASTM standard, which we declare ourselves, is more like a derivative learning from the big world with the certified aircraft. Okay. And of course, we see the tendency that the bigger the engine gets, the higher the percentage of the certified business will be, especially now that we're talking being able to power pretty fast 
last Tuesday the airplanes which might actually require certification due to the speed or other items as well as now we're starting with the four-seater business pretty heavily a lot of them is certified also flight schools very interesting market for us a nice growing market actually a lot of that does require certified engines so it's always been like a natural thing to us but now going into the bigger scale of engines even more so now that four seats are coming to light sport aircraft yeah that seems almost a market made for the 915 it's a very good news for us and we love it and we already have a few out there as you can see like the uh, airplane factory in South Africa with a sling TSI like a very beautiful four seat a very powerful nice flying aircraft and we see a few more outside so it, it's just our market I think so we're very happy to look into that and we we also had some customers who moved from bigger horse engines from different companies to our engines and still have the same performance because at the end of the day it's the thrust you're making of the propeller not so much the horsepower on the paperwork. Well, and, and the weight of the engine, and Correct. it's all its related peripherals. Correct. And uh, the 915 remains, although it's a more powerful engine, it's still quite a light engine, it's certainly in its class. That's very true. You're talking about 180 two pounds if I cover correctly and the full installation is around 250 pounds depending on the, the system with, so all the with all the hardware fuel system and everything so you're still looking at a considerable less amount of weight in your front compared to some other engines which of course makes a lot of difference in the performance at the end of the day so let's talk about one more thing then about 915 but also this applies to 912 if I'm correct and this goes back to this idea of an in-flight adjustable prop because more news is that we think single lever control is coming this is an automated system of adjusting the uh, the pitch yeah. of the prop so the pilot doesn't have to think about it at all he just moves the throttle or the lever where he yeah. wants it and things happen you've been working with the uh, uh, rs aerotech and c ray on a project to learn about that correct but as that comes along i would think that's an important connect up for the 915 as well does that does that make sense to you that slc Assuming FAA actually mm. approves that, doesn't that enhance the capability for uh, 915 users? Oh, I think it will actually help the engine if in its performance and it will actually help the customers. I mean, LSA came up to make light sport affordable, but also easy by defining certain boundaries you cannot um, go beyond. And I think a single lever, single lever control is just a perfect add-on to that. Another lever taken away from a pilot who's, who's actually more time to enjoy what he's doing and can focus on the essential parts. Because the engine can handle, why not having the engine handle it? And the reason for that, the reason why I posed it that way was that these engines, these newer engines that you have, the, the, I'll call it the I-Series, yeah. that's not your name, that's my name, but those have some intelligence to them. They can supply the knowledge to the hardware mechanisms that adjust that prop. You're at the end of the runway, you have no airspeed, you give it full power, the system knows, well, you're not going anywhere, you've given full power, you must want climb. I'm sure it's not that simplistic, yeah. but that's the idea. Correct, that's actually the idea. And as you said correctly, with the IS Series 912 IS and 950 and IS, you have a FedEx system which can uh, handle and provide all this information necessary to do that calculation and do that handling at the end of the day. So it's just a natural development for us, and I'm sure that's not going to be the end of the story what you can do with such kind of engines. Knowing Rotax, I'm sure that's not the end of the story. <laughs> Very true. I've asked you a lot of questions. I try to ask the ones that people would have asked if they were talking to you, but maybe they have more. Where can we send them on the web to learn all things Rotax? Correct. They can easily go see, at, see all the things on flyrotax.com, where we also have all the menus, technical information, and all the news update for you. Excellent. Lots of information about Rotax because they're on so many of our airplanes and all those affordable airplanes available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Mark Becker and myself here today at Oshkosh. Thanks, Dan.